thinking about it, I did do an executive briefing to the U.S. State Department. <laughs> and I don't think I'm telling uh, stories out of school when I can tell you what I told them. And it would be a very similar thing to the Department of Foreign Affairs. Uh, first of all, uh, the Internet is not about websites. It's a global computational platform that enables people to collaborate on an astronomical scale. And this affects everything about what a Department of Foreign Affairs does, from diplomacy um, right through to intervening in uh, situations in the world to try and uh, reduce conflict to solving global problems. Um, and that it's possible now to change the architecture of a, of, of a department like that. In the past, we had people inside our boundaries that did everything. Well, now with the internet, talent can be outside and the Department of Foreign Affairs could be a platform that not only delivered a certain value and services and so on, but that it helped curate public value, where, where civil society, private sector, other government and uh, organizations and individuals came together to create and co-create the value that the department uh, does. The second thing is um, I would embrace transparency as a powerful new force. Now, of course, the State Department and all government functions that do this everywhere in the world are worried about WikiLeaks. And sure, uh, all diplomacy should not be conducted in, in public. That's not in the public interest. And for sure, government employees shouldn't be giving, uh, violating their confidentiality agreements. But WikiLeaks is just the tip of the iceberg of a new age of transparency that overall is really positive for a department like foreign affairs because sunlight is the best disinfectant and we have a deeply infected world. Everything from corruption to, to actual conflict. Of course, foreign affairs wants to see the growth of, of uh, secular and democratic societies and governments that are stable around the world as we all do. And these the social media is participating and is contributing to um, insurrections really all around the world and on the one hand this is p very positive I mean you take Tunisia the revolution wasn't created by social media it was created by a new generation that wanted hope and that didn't want to be treated as subjects anymore but the problem was that um, these wiki revolutions unlike all previous revolutions in history don't really have a leadership in the traditional sense so there's no organization that takes power and this creates a vacuum, and politics abhors a vacuum. So very quickly, the forces that are organized, usually the old regime and some pretty unsavory you know, fundamentalists and, and extreme forces come in to try and fill the vacuum. This is happening today in Egypt. So the next step for foreign affairs would be how could we encourage and help these movements use the media not just to bring down an old tyrannical government but to establish a new open democratic and secular uh, kind of society. There's a big change in the nature of democracy that's underway and foreign affairs could lead that. Why don't, why doesn't the minister host a three-day conversation of all Canadians on a certain topic um, related to peace in the world or Canada's role or related to any of the, the various things that are uh, germane to the department. Why doesn't it launch a series of challenges? These are basically contests where we challenge Canadians to come up with whatever, a great new app or a great new uh, uh, two-minute video that could be used to help highlight Canada's view on something in the world or whatever. Finding new ways to engage citizens and in doing so, take us from an old model of democracy where it was based on representation, which is a good thing, but where citizens were inert and where there was a weak public mandate. Why not move towards the second era of democracy where we have representation but it's based on a culture of public deliberation and, and active citizenship.